Today we will be making a valveless single nozzle pull shift. The materials needed for this project are a mason or jam jar, a drill, a fuel source like isopropyl, methyl alcohol, or even nitro fuel, a long barbecue lighter, gloves and goggles, a shallow container to fill with ice water, and of course, a fire extinguisher. Now I'm going to give a more in-depth explanation on the materials. Uh, if you just want the instructions, skip to this timestamp. So it's a jam jar post jet, so you got to use jam jars. You can use either size. I find that it doesn't really matter, although I like the bigger ones. Uh -huh. One thing I like about these jam jars is the fact that these lids are interchangeable. So you can just switch the nozzles. If you don't have access to a jam jar, you can also just use an old pasta jar. This one actually is one of my best ones and it's comparable to the large jar. For the hole, which is also the nozzle, you just take your lid and drill a hole. I've read that a 3 8 inch or a 10 millimeter drill bit works best, but I've seen people use 10 millimeters to 12 millimeters. I use a drill press to make different holes of different sizes to see which one works best. perfect except for this one and if you don't have access to a drill or a drill press you can just use a hammer and a screwdriver this was actually my best performing uh, nozzle and it was made with that and look how janky it is god mother damn oh look how horrible that is but it looked like this shallow container to fill with ice water. So the literature online says to submerge your post jet in cold ice water. Allegedly, this assists in drawing in more air so that the fuel can combust more. Uh, how much of this is true, I'm not sure. However, it works a whole lot better with it. So I'd say give it a try. All right, now let's talk fuel. Isopropyl alcohol, easiest fuel to source. You can find this in a bathroom or a CVS or Walgreens or whatever. Although easier to acquire, uh, it's very sensitive to fuel to air ratios, so it may be difficult to maintain a combustion and you'll be spending a lot of time just blowing into it, trying to get the right air and fuel ratio. So, eh, you know. The next best thing is methanol or methyl alcohol. You can find this at an AutoZone or similar store in these yellow heat bottles. And it'll tell you in the back, contains methyl alcohol. Make sure you get the yellow ones because the red ones, it's just isopropyl alcohol yellow heat now if you're truly crazy you get to graduate to nitro fuel so nitro fuel is methanol with an added percentage of nitromethane to give an extra kick and a few more oxygen atoms the nitromethane makes it less sensitive to fuel to air ratio so you can have a hole that's a little bit too small a little bit too big it's going to work just fine nitro fuel ranges from 10 percent to 40 percent i would say stick to the lower percent of 10 however i am using 20. safety police here so those last two fuels are what some people might call dangerous or toxic so make sure you wear gloves goggles in your well ventilated area maybe like i don't know outside and uh don't eat it also wood normal stuff when it burns nice pretty orange fire methanol when it burns in daylight clear you're not going to see anything 1981 indy 500 <laughs> Make sure you are safe. You have a fire extinguisher. You have a wet rag to put it off. It may look like it's off, but it might it's still burning. Maybe. Wet rag kills it. 
All right, let's have a little bit of instructions. Grab your lid, make a hole. Get your jar, put just about a little bit of fuel. Close it, give it a good old shake, and light it. This is water, don't worry. Ideally, you would hear a little whenever you take off your thumb. That's just the fuel expanding and take up more space. That's a good sign. So if it didn't light, make sure you kill the flame, open up the lid, and blow air into it to reprime the container. Then close back the lid, give it a good old shake, and try lighting again. Now let's go try out the lids and the fuel. It's too bright to see anything. Oh, it's trying. That worked, not as long as I wanted though. Right, this is the modified 14 millimeter nozzle with a little bit more fuel of nitro fuel. All right, this is the smaller jar with that 14 millimeter nozzle. Just trying things out. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. All right, I wanna see what happens if I do it sideways. Will there be thrust? Will it move uh, that way? Will it work at all? Let's find out. Jam jars are very fickle. On paper, the science is easy and straightforward, but in real life, not so much. I honestly thought that, you know, spending all this time and energy making perfect holes for the mason jars, they would work perfectly. But um, that was obviously not true. When I realized none of the lids were working with the mason jars, I had an extra lid and jerry-rigged a special nozzle, 14 millimeters. And this lid actually showed promise. It was one of the later ones I was using, and it was continuously giving a instead of just a. So I'm pretty proud of that. I really don't know. Everything online says to use 10 millimeters and 12 millimeters, and that worked for the pasta jar. But for the mason jars, this larger lid worked. I don't know if it has to do with the area of the hole. It has to do with dead space of air. Maybe it's not curved enough. Maybe it wasn't cold enough. I don't know. So what's next? I have a general roadmap that I want to follow in making a post jet. And the next steps include 3D printing a jam jar post jet and rinse pop. These are working pretty well, but I need to fine tune them more. 3D printing a thermal jet and then ultimately welding out of metal a thermal jet. Making a valveless post jet and then making a valved post jet. And the ultimate goal is to make a turbo jet. So that'd be pretty cool. I call it to you guys to try it yourself. Make a video, tag me, tell me what kind of jar you use, what kind of nozzle, what size hole, how much fuel. And yeah, come on guys, it's not rocket science, it's jet science. Oh brother, that this sucks. guy stinks! And I didn't really go over the science on how a post jet actually works. I can go over that next episode if you guys would like, as I wanted to keep this one more like a tutorial rather than like a science lesson. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and of course, stay curious. However, Hi, Casper. Meow. 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 However,